Our next session is an interactive session with the Honorable Minister. While he is on his way, may I request uh, the, the others uh, to join on dais. May I uh, call Dr. Christian Schindler, Mr. H.K. Agarwal from Grassim Industries, Mr. Dheeraj Raichan, Chairman SRTPC, Mr. Khalid Schumann, Executive Director, Cotton Egypt Association, and Mr. Sondar Rajan, Director, Operations, LMW. The minister is on his way and he's requested the session to commence, so may I request the panelists to be on the dais, please? Representatives from other EPCs. A warm welcome to Mr. Sudhir Sekri from Apparel Export Promotion Council. Mr. Raja Shanmugam from TEA, Mr. Sanjay Jain, our past chairman, and senior representatives from several other companies requested the session to start. So may I request uh, the members on the dais to please come up. Chairman City, Mr. H.K. Agarwal, Managing Director, Grasim Industries. Mr. Dheeraj Raichan Shah, Chairman, SRTEPC. Mr. Sondar Rajan, Director of Operations, Lakshmi Machine Works. I met him. I met him. He's there. Dr. Christian Schindler, Director General, ITMF. And Mr. Khalid Shuman, Executive Director, Cotton Egypt Association. May I request all of you to be on the dais. May I request Mr. T. Rajkumar, Chairman City, to give his welcome address for this session. Friends, uh, good afternoon to one and all. The Honorable Minister should be joining us in 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, he's just in the Lok Sabha. He should be here in 10 to 15 minutes. So in the meanwhile, Honorable Minister would like us to start the session. And to all the speakers, we will just, you can give your remarks. And once the Honorable Minister is here, then we'll have the interactive session. And again, you might have to uh, give your views. So probably now uh, you can just start the session and uh, we can move on. So friends, uh, uh, esteemed invitees of city, friends from media, delegates, and friends from the textile industry, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to all of you on behalf of the Confederation of Indian Textile Industry. It's my proud privilege to extend a very warm welcome to the Honorable Union Minister of Textiles, Commerce and Industry, Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution, Shri Piyush Goyalji. In fact, uh, Honorable Minister has been very interactive and has been very helpful on all the demands of the industry. Indian textile and apparel sector has witnessed a challenging time during COVID-19 when India's textile and apparel exports declined to about 30.9 billion US dollars from the levels of 37.5 billion in 1819. However, our Honorable Minister stood strong with the industry and provided all the necessary policy support to the industry to overcome through those tough times. It's only due to his strong hand-holding that the Indian textile and apparel industry could bounce back from those tough times. The theme of this 10th edition of ATEXCON is reimagining the textile and apparel industry for the next decade, wherein many senior government officials, policymakers, and trade experts will brainstorm to lay down the roadmap of the textile and apparel industry for the next decade. So with this, I would uh, welcome Shri H Mr. H.K. Agarwal, Managing Director, Grasim Ind Industries Limited. Welcome, sir. Mr. Diraj Raichan Shah, Chairman, the 
Synthetic Rionics Textile Export Promotion Council, SRTPC. Mr. Soundarajan, Director of Operations, Lakshmi Machine Works Limited. Welcome, sir. Dr. Christian Sinla, Director General, International Textile Manufacturers Federation, ITMF. Welcome, Dr. Sinla. Mr. Khalid Shuman, Executive Director, Cotton Egypt Association. Welcome, Mr. Khalid Shuman. So with this, friends, now I would uh, uh, request uh, Mr. H.K. Agarwal, Managing Director, Grasim Industries, to give his views and followed by all the speakers would be giving their views and uh, once the Honorable Minister arrives, then probably we'll have the interactive session. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, uh, friends. It's a great honor and pleasure for me to be amongst you and share my views. I think the Indian textile industry is at a situation which is a lifetime opportunity for the industry and players in the industry to take it forward in a very, very definitive way. Today, India enjoys certain uh, benefits which are really unique to the country in the world of textile industry. Like India grows almost five, six million tons of cotton, which is about 20% of the global cotton production. We export most of the cotton as raw cotton or as, at the best as cotton yarn. Not so much in the form of final fabric or garment. So this is a great opportunity, one of the great opportunities for Indian textile industry to add more value and in turn more economic activities, employment and economic growth for the country. If we can process more of the cotton in country and export the final product, which has much higher value. Second thing I would like to share, my thought is, the value chain of textile industry is complex and long. And there is a apparent or inherent conflict between each point of the value chain, right from the uppermost at the fiber level to the yarn and then fabric processing and finally at garment. And we have associations or bodies for each uh, part of the value chain. And most of the time, these associations work for the best interest of their members, which at times becomes limited in their approach as against the overall health of the entire textile industry. I personally believe that for India to have a very strong textile industry, all parts of the value chain need to be healthy. It is like the body. You cannot have a strong head and weak hands or weak legs or weak back. Every part of the body has to be strong. So here, I would like to take this opportunity to appeal to all my colleagues that we should think more holistic also and rise above the narrow thinking of our limited part of the respective value chain. Like in the world, the textile industry has more integrated players. But in India, somehow, because of historical policies, we developed in uh, not so integrated things. Small scale industry was given more preference over the integrated textiles. And the good textile industries of early 60s or early 70s then became unviable. But now is the time to think again in a holistic way. And we should not try to advocacy of limited things which can be detrimental to the overall textile industry's health. The, in one forum, the finance minister said she is very confused about what textile industry wants because everybody goes and talks to her for limited thing. And then it affects the overall policy which is not in our best interest of the Indian textile industry. So I think uh, I will stop, like to stop here and uh, uh, let my other colleagues uh, share their views. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, may, I, may I now invite Mr. Soundar Rajan, 
Director of Operations, Lakshmi Machine Works, please. Thank you, Ms. Okay, sure. Um, thank you, uh, T. Rajkumar, Chairman City, uh, the dignitaries of the dais, and also friends. And uh, I'm extremely happy to be here on this conference today. Thank you for inviting me. And at this point of time, the two days deliberations have clearly shown the path for the new uh, way of doing things in the future. And uh, when we look at uh, the way how we have reached this particular s situation, for the past 60 years, the textile spinning industry has gone through a big change. Particularly in 1960s, the entire textile machineries were imported and there was not a great opportunity. And then the visionaries in Coimbatore, the industrialist, even those days, the Atman Nirbhar Bharat, they started the textile uh, machines, spinning machines to be made in India, which was very cost effective, highly reliable and productive. That way, it was a great opportunity for the Indian spinning industry to go, grow to this level. So now uh, we have reached a stage where we need to take the next step of making things different when we want to move uh, in, in 25 years, in 2047, to be a developed nation. For that, whatever we happened in the 60 years has to be really speeded up and then make a huge difference in making things happen differently on various aspects of uh, technology, innovation, digitization and all those areas. That way, uh, we have a great opportunity to go ahead and do things in differently and make a good difference. I think I want to be very brief and then we can take it up during the discussion after the, the minister comes. Thank you, Mr. Saundar Rajan. May I request Mr. Khalid Shuman, Executive Director, Cotton Egypt Association, please. Uh, thank you very much. I would like to thank uh, CT for giving me this great opportunity. Actually, I'm very honored to be uh, here in India for the second time of my life. A very nice experience and I met um, my, all my friends and colleagues. Um, uh, actually, I'm happy that uh, the conference is talking about uh, circularity and sustainability because uh, circularity and sustainability now are not an option. It's a must, especially after the uh, new rules that is set by the uh, European uh, community regarding sustainable uh, products and in fashion. Um, so it is, uh, it is becoming crucial to, uh, to abide to these, uh, these standards. Um, I was uh, lucky enough to have uh, introduced, uh, I'm proud to have introduced the BCI uh, in Egypt, which was recommended to us by uh, the uh, John Lewis and the um, uh, retailers in the UK who uh, told us that uh, every, every retailer has set um, a target to go sustainable by 75% till 100% uh, in, uh, this was in 2016 and the targets was, uh, were uh, 20 and 25. Uh, so uh, uh, we introduced the BCI concept in Egypt, uh, which, is, which was very late for uh, as a country to join the BCI, but better late than, uh, than nothing. And um, we partnered with uh, UNIDO, who, had, who made a great offer. UNIDO is the United Nations Industrial Development Program, uh, who has worked uh, uh, very hard with this project, together with the Cotton Research Institute and the Ministry of agriculture and um, the BCI we have we have uh, uh, launched the BCI Egyptian cotton first crop uh, in 2020 uh, this was a, a, a big celebration where we have invited uh, retailers and the brands uh, in Egypt from all over the world and top manufacturers and there were so many from India of course uh, and this was uh, uh, the launch of the BCI in, in, in Egypt. Imagining now, after all these new laws, what, was, what would have been the situation if we didn't even have the BCI, which, which has launched, launched already more than 15, 15 years ago. Um, and there is also another project for, uh, for sustainability, uh, which is done by Cotton Connect. This started one year ago by uh, Cotton Connect with uh, the program is called uh, REAL and uh, REAL stands for um, 
a responsible environment enhanced livelihoods. And this project is uh, sponsored by the White Company um, uh, in, in Egypt. Uh, and the White Company, and we have also a partner uh, uh, as implementing co partners, Al Ikhlas Company, who worked with uh, Cotton Research Institute as a technical partner. And this project is for uh, in Samul village in Al Mahalla. Thank you. Honorable Union Minister of Textiles, Commerce and Industry, Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution, Sri Piyush Goyalji, esteemed invitees of the Confederation of Indian Textile Industry, friends from media, delegates and friends from the textile industry, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to you all. It's my proud privilege to extend a very warm welcome to the Honorable Union Minister of Textiles, Commerce and Industry, Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution, Sri Piyush Goyalji. We are extremely thankful to your good self, sir, for accepting our humble request and taking out your precious time from your busy schedule and to inaugurate this 10th edition of ATEXCON. Sir, your good self has always been very supportive to the entire textile and apparel industry, and we are extremely overwhelmed and delighted with your esteemed presence in this 10th edition of ATEXCON. The NDA government, led by our Honorable Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modiji, has been taking numerous path-breaking policy initiatives to enhance the global competitiveness of the country, especially the Indian textile and apparel industry. Our Honorable Minister of Textile, Sri Piyush Goyalji, has always been giving a major thrust to our industry and addressing all the structural issues on a fast track mode. The Indian textile and apparel sector has witnessed a challenging time during COVID-19 period when our exports declined to about 30.9 billion. And from that levels, due to our Honorable Minister's proactive initiatives and constant encouragement and providing all the necessary policy support to the industry to overcome those tough times. It is only due to his strong hand-holding that the Indian textile and apparel industry could bounce back from those tough times and India could achieve its highest ever textile and apparel exports of about 43.4 billion US dollars in 2021-2022, which also accounted for about 10.3% of India's total merchandise exports. For all the proactive measures and constant support given by our Honorable Minister, the textile industry is very grateful to him for all the support. Friends, I would like you all to give a strong applause to our Honorable Minister. <laughs> Sir, the recent policy initiatives such as PLI schemes, PM Mitra, and the conclusion of trade agreements with UAE and Australia, and with many more FTAs in pipeline, has laid down the foundation stone for a strong textile and apparel industry. And I'm extremely happy, sir, under your able guidance and dynamic leadership, Indian textile and apparel industry will achieve new heights, and we will surely achieve the target market size of 350 billion US dollars, including 100 billion US dollars exports by 2025 26. The theme of this 10th edition of ATEXCON is reimagining the textile and apparel industry for the next decade, wherein many senior government officials, policymakers, and trade experts have been brainstorming to lay down the road of the map 
of the textile and apparel industry for the next decade. I am extremely sure that our government will provide the necessary policy support on all aspects that will emerge out of to today's brainstorming and together we will take India's textile and apparel industry to greater heights. To conclude, ladies and gentlemen, whenever we were in need, whenever we asked for something, our Honorable Minister has never shied away. He has been so proactive. The first time in the history of the textile and apparel industry, Minister flew to Mumbai, Minister held meetings on Sundays, with the Agriculture Ministry to boost the cotton production, created a textile advisory group under the chairmanship of Sri Suresh Kotak and ensured that the policy measures will suit the industry and the help to the farmers will be rendered on time. His appeal for the industry to join hands with the government by providing all support to ensure we achieve good cotton production in the years to come. So friends, once again, on behalf of all of you, I thank our Honorable Union Minister of Textiles, Commerce, Industry, Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution, Shri Piyush Goyalji, for gracing today's occasion. Thank you. May I request Chairman City to felicitate our Honorable Minister? We once again welcome all our honorable uh, panelists on the dais today, Mr. H.K. Agarwal, Mr. Sondar Rajan, Dr. Schindler, and Mr. Khalid Schumann. If you could start the session with the short uh, observations of each of the members on the dais. Honorable Minister for Textiles, Commerce and Industry, Consumer Benefits, Food and Public Distribution, Sri Piyush Goyalji, uh, Confederation of Indian Textile Industry City has been meticulous in promoting the interest of the Indian textile industry both in India and across the globe. S city and its members represent the entire textile value chain in India enabling city to become the most important link between the industry and the government. Particularly, uh, UNESCO got great connect with the government, which helps us to really take the industry forward in a big way. I take this opportunity to congratulate city and its leadership, Rajkumar, for the excellent work, and I sincerely believe their good work will bring more glory to the Indian textile industry. The developing nations are with their fast growth rates, developed countries with already established huge markets for the textiles and it is equally contributing the per capita consumption in a big way. Now, uh, Asia has rapidly emerged as the central hub for the global textile industry. Despite of the headwinds, the production of the textile products within Asia is expanding rapidly. Also, the appetite for the new capital equipment has been strong and rebound within the traditional Asian textile hubs. Just at this point of time, I would like to just recall, we just look at the past 60 years how the textile industry has grown. Um, you are aware, Minister, that uh, the spinning industry at the 1960s were importing the machines and then the visionaries like GKD started the machines to give the cost-effective machines in India. Even those days, what Prime Minister's Atma Nirbar was started in 1960s. And today, if you look at the Indian spinning industry, more than 70% of the spinning machines are from the LMW. So that way, we, the company has contributed to the textile industry. At this point of time, when you came to Texpats also, you have asked, what about the next step? What about the auto corner and the air jet spinning and things like that. We are in the process of making it happen. Now, that is where the 
overall technology and the innovation plays a very major role. What is happening is at this point of time, the next step at today involves a lot of digitalization, electronics, sensors, and many other things where at this point of time, getting such talents in India is also a challenge where we are now working very hard to make things happen. So today we are in this situation of the past 60 years of hard work and in 2047, when Prime Minister wants India to be the developed nation, the time left out is only 25 years. In this 25 years, we need to really speed up with all kinds of innovation technology in a big way. It is not only in the spinning industry, but also the post-processing, the knitting, the weaving, and also garmenting and other areas also. Textile industry being one of the very big industries, now, this will contribute to the growth and the GDP in a very big way because there is a lot of value additions are possible and the new textiles are emerging, the synthetics are coming up in a big way and your ministry is also identifying such situations and then making appropriate policies for that. For example, the shift, the rest of the world, 30% is cotton and 70% is synthetic. Now we are the other way around. For us to really grow in the industry, we need to really make that kind of a shift. For that, your ministry is appropriately addressing the need and then taking things forward. In addition to that, the large mega parks, the uh, PM Mitra, which is coming up also, is, will be helping us in a big way. So your PLI schemes are also helping the entire value chain to make a huge difference. So that way, now additionally, what I personally request is the kind of a future innovation where we need to not only join academia and also very large uh, research bodies across the world in Germany and uh, other countries. If you could, government also could facilitate the new R&Ds to come up in a big way to support the industry to make the machines in a fine manner for the futuristic requirements. That is where it will make a big difference. It is so far, everybody has spoken about the end product. Ultimately, the end product comes out of the machines. So those machines are also very critical for the future requirements. So that way, that's where the R&D and other areas, we need to take it in a big way. Uh, and as Rajkumar has already mentioned, uh, at this point of time, you are doing everything from cotton to the end product. And in the meantime, I am also requesting that on the engineering side, also if you could give a very good focus, it will help us in a big way. I just want to uh, end this with a small remark and thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, sir. May I now request uh, Shri HK, Mr. HK Agarwal. Please. Good afternoon, sir. So, honored to be uh, on this uh, platform for sharing our views with you. So we just celebrated 75 years of our independence. I am very proud to say that Grassim Industries is also 75 years this year. <laughs> Grassim Industries was incorporated just 10 days after India's independence, 25th August 1947. <laughs> uh, Mahatma Gandhi and uh, Mr. G.D. Birla shared a relationship like a father and a son. When independence was about, it was very clear that it is going to be, country is going to be partitioned. And Mr. G.D. Birla being associated with Mahatma Gandhi was part of many discussions about post-independence situation. He saw that all the cotton growing areas were going to go to the Pakistan whether it was Dhaka or Lahore or all the cotton growing Rawal Pindi. And India population was not small even in those years. So he thought of the issue, how is India going to clothe its population? Polyester was not yet invented in those years. So there was viscose staple fiber already there in the Europe. So Mr. G. D. Birla took upon himself with the blessings of Mahatma Gandhi to bring the technology of viscose manufacturing in India, and that is how Nagda was born 
1947, sir. So in 1955, we started production with 10,000 tons viscose per year. And today, with the, so much dedication of all our earlier generations, we are here at almost a million ton production of viscose fiber in India. So I will not talk so much about uh, viscose fiber only because we are here uh, with uh, Sir. We would like to draw his attention to what challenges we have in front of us and how as one team, one India, one nation, we can do better. So today the competition is not among individual company, that is a smaller issue. The competition is among the value chains of the world. So there is a value chain of, say, Tore. Tore is a big polyester manufacturer. They have their own manufacturing, their own downstream value chain, spinners, fabric makers, and others. And they compete at the world level. So we have to, as a India, we also have to develop a value chain, which can compete with the value chain of Tore and the Tejins. Like in viscose fibers, we have a value player like Langing from Europe. Lenging has been in this industry for long and being in Europe, they have a very strong value chain and connect with the brands and retail. Now, they make it all the difficulties for any newcomer to enter that value chain. So, as a India, we have to develop an Indian value chain which can compete with the value chain of Lenging and so on and so forth. Similarly for cotton. We have to develop a value chain which can compete with the international value chains. So that will bring a great strength and benefit to everyone in the textile industry in India. So textile industry is a very complex and long industry. It starts with upstream, then spinning, then weaving or knitting, then processing, and then ultimately garmenting. So it is like a body which has many parts. And for a healthy body, every part of the body needs to be healthy. So as an industry, as a nation, we have to work towards making a healthy textile industry where all parts of the value chain are healthy. And that is where the holistic thinking of the textile industry will be very useful. So these are some of the suggestions or ideas I have, I wanted to share with you, sir. Under your dynamic leadership, we have taken many bold initiatives and these are going to bear fruits in the coming years. And I'm sure uh, these new initiatives will keep coming as we learn from these initiatives and we will keep fine tuning and Indian textile industry will continue to gain strength after strength. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. May I now request Dr. Christian Skindler, Director General, International Textile Manufacturers Federation, please. Thank you, Mr. Rajkumar. Uh, Honorable Minister um, Goyal, um, I will share some observations and maybe a little background. ITMF is the International Textile Manufacturers Federation, so I'm a little bit the outsider uh, with the outside uh, perspective on India um, and can compare India with many other countries um, that are members of ITMF. And we publish um, various interesting um, statistics and um, other documents that compare companies, uh, uh, sorry, countries. Um, and that observe also the, the movement, for example, of textile uh, machinery shipped every year around the world, including the wonderful machines of LMW. Um, uh, and we observe since um, the last 20 years that uh, the majority of all new textile machines is still um, going to China, by far. Um, on average, uh, a rule of thumb, you can say that 50% of all new machines worldwide go to China alone. India is the second um, biggest investor in machinery, but uh, a distant second, followed by other um, countries uh, in different segments. You know, um, it's Bangladesh, Vietnam, um, Turkey is an important player in, in other areas. Um, and many people thought already a few years back that you know, China would lose its dominance very quickly. It's losing some of its dominance in, in apparel production because apparel production is something you can shift rather easily compared to textile production. But China has uh, created a strength um, 
uh, that uh, is very dominant in fiber production, uh, um, especially on the synthetic fiber uh, side. Um, they're still strong in cotton production, but have their problems there, as you know. But they have also created textile clusters around the world. They have, I don't know how many clusters of unbelievable size and variety. And uh, if you come there as a customer, you can basically uh, ask um, and find uh, any producer um, in those clusters of, of your specific uh, needs um, that will be able to produce you any specific product on any scale, literally. So what I want to uh, emphasize is that uh, your ideas of the mega parks are, are very good. You should strengthen them in India and strengthen um, the Indian clusters and build on the strengths of, of your domestic uh, industry, which is very cost competitive. Every other year, ITMF also produces a comparison, cost comparison study only on production of yarns, fabrics, um, and finished fabrics um, between 13 countries around the world. And in many of them, India is the most cost competitive, uh, competitive producer, especially in spinning, um, which is not coming as a big surprise. Uh, but also in other segments, India is a very cost competitive producer. But that leaves out the other uh, important aspects um, that we also discussed here today uh, that are a hindrance to the development of um, even further export growth of India, which are um, fair, uh, not fair trade, uh, free trade agreements that are missing sometimes. Yes, please. Yes. They are very important for the competitiveness of any country to have free trade agreements. Um, uh, and we mentioned that already earlier today. And I think that is something uh, that India also has to, has to work on to get good access to important markets. Another observation I think I would like to emphasize um, again is uh, the China Plus uh, strategy. I'm sure that this was already... Um, uh, underway even before the pandemic, but the pandemic has really shown that you can't rely um, on one super uh, supplier uh, for all the circumstances. And we have learned how quickly things can change because of a pandemic, because of geopolitics. So the new, uh, the new catchword uh, in the last few years has become resilience. The supply chains have to become more resilient. Um, because the weakest uh, link in your supply chain um, can be anywhere uh, and it can be also in China and if that is your, your weakest link, uh, you are suddenly out of business because you are lacking an, an important, maybe a small but a very important uh, part um, without which um, you can't produce um, your product. Uh, the automotive industry knows very well, but also the textile machinery company producers knows very well how important electronics have become. If you can't get uh, a hand on your electronic chips, you can't produce a machine, you can't produce a car, uh, you can't run a factory um, that is running um, uh, on high speed and, uh, and with very complex um, production um, processes. So, value chains are very important um, within a country, but also um, beyond the country. Uh, and um, with that, I also mean that, uh, we, heard, uh, we heard that also this morning, you also have to look out for regional supply chains. And with that, I mean uh, that you should not only look as competitors, you know, at countries like Bangladesh or Sri Lanka, but maybe as partners to strengthen your regional supply chain. Um, that's also an observation I, I took away also this morning um, that is very important. And finally, um, I would really highlight uh, the topic of climate change and sustainability um, for our industry, which um, is uh, coming our way um, as a tsunami, I said this morning. We heard the regulation requirements coming up in Europe uh, that will be relevant for anybody who wants to export to Europe, um, whether you are a producer in Europe or whether you are importing your products to Europe, you will be asked not only by your brands, by your customers to produce sustainable, but also by the governments, um, in that case by the European Commission. So um, regulation is something really important um, um, that is coming our way. 
uh, and that is something um, also governments really have to look at. Uh, I know that regulation is like um, a, a word that wasn't um, uh, very uh, uh, in fashion, you know, 10, 15 years uh, uh, ago. Um, it, it, it was, uh, equ uh, it was uh, regarded as red tape. But um, things have, have changed now, uh, and regulation is coming wherever you go, in, in, in Europe, in the US, um, in Switzerland, and you have to uh, support um, the industry with regulation that is helping the industry to grow um, into the future, with regulation that is helping them to grow in, on an international level. Uh, and to do that, you have to work very um, closely with your industry partners and to find uh, solutions um, that is helping the entire industry. There are always fractions within the industries that are fighting each other, but in the end, um, governments are there to set regulations which the industry have to follow, um, and those industry um, will uh, adapt to, to the regulation, but of course there's good regulation and there's not good regulation. So your challenge, Minister, is to find the regulation that is helping the Indian industry to grow in the future uh, with regard to climate change and uh, sustainable um, supply chains. With that, I leave it and um, hand over again to the Chairman. Thank you, Dr. Christian Singhla. May I now request Mr. Khalid Shumain, Executive Director, Cotton Egypt Association, please. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Minister. Uh, I'm proud to be here uh, in this with all the experts and uh, pioneers in the industry of textiles. Um, India has been for a long time the major partner for the Egyptian cotton uh, importing. Uh, it's the number one country who is importing from, from Egypt. So actually, uh, we, we can very easily say that we are partners. And um, this may give me the right to make a hope for the uh, India, for India and Indian textile. Um, I this hope I, I made it for Egypt, and I would like also to make it for for India, our partners. Um, I hope that uh, we can find uh, one day um, brands, uh, very strong brands uh, like um, Hugo Boss. Uh, uh, Stella McCartney, Dior, uh, because I know that uh, India has been doing a great effort for maximizing the value of the cotton generally and the Egyptian cotton. So um, I think the, the, the best thing for maximizing, maximizing the value is that to have very strong um, brands and brand names uh, all over the world. So this is my, uh, my wish and this will, will pull the whole, the whole industry. Um, this was uh, my uh, my hope for thank this. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Khalid. And um, I'm uh, I'm happy that we are going to sign uh, today's um, MOU with uh, with City uh, to promote the business opportunities among our members uh, in the trade of fiber, clothing, machinery, uh, and for the machinery, um, uh, we are innovating. The the, in, the government has invested 1.3 billion dollars in the uh, renovating the. Uh, textile industry and uh, the ginning mills machines are all from Bajaj uh, from India and also the uh, oil refining of the seeds are, uh, are from, from, from India. So jointly we are going to make uh, uh, B2B meetings, seminars and conferences and also uh, we have a good experience about the traceability and uh, authenticity verification. So this also will, uh, we can be um, uh, exchanging our knowledge and experience in this uh, field. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Khalid Shumain. <laughs> Special address by our Honorable Minister, Shri Piyush Goyal, Honorable Minister for Textiles, Commerce and Industry, Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Rajkumar, Chairman of uh, City. Mr. H.K. Agarwal, Managing Director, Grassim Industries from the Aditya Bidla Group. Mr. 
Sondar Rajan, director from Lakshmi Machine Works, Dr. Christian Skindler, the director general of the International Textile Manufacturers Federation, Mr. Khalid Kuman, executive director of the Cotton Egypt Association, all the distinguished participants at the Asian Textile Conference, ladies and gentlemen. Truly delighted to get this opportunity to meet with all of you, hear your views, and inaugurate this very important 10th edition of the Asian Textile Conference. In fact, uh, I'd like to start by complimenting you for bringing together all the stakeholders of the value chains that were articulated just now on one platform and deliberating on the way forward, particularly on different aspects. I was just going through your program, and it's indeed quite impressive where you're not only looking at our current state of affairs, but more futuristic in terms of what we need to do to rebuild the Indian textile industry, the apparel industry, how styles are changing, trends are evolving, what needs to be done in terms of innovation, in terms of a greater contribution of India to the world trade, and most importantly also focusing on digitization, automation, and making India a relevant large player in the international textile trade. So very, very happy to see this program. It's very really well articulated, thought of uh, engagement. I believe you're also going to discuss the trade agreements that we have either already concluded or in the process of negotiations. And what was mentioned by you, sustainable textiles is also finding focus in today's discussions. So in that sense, if one was to see as we complete 75 years of independence, Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, the role of the textile sector has been extremely important over the last 75 years. And in a way, uh, and I must compliment you, Agarwalji, for your own contribution to this industry for 75 years. Another week and you'll be completing 75 years. My compliments to you, your team, and to the Birla family for their <laughs> service to this sector over more than seven decades. But in a way, if we look back at this industry, one can take a lot of pride and satisfaction at the achievements over 75 years. It's not very long ago that even Hindi films were made on roti, kapda, and makan. If we look back, within our life, many of us here would recall that there were challenges around food, there were challenges around clothing, and there were challenges around shelter that we have all seen in our own lifetimes. And look at India as we complete 75 years. I think the first challenge that the country overcame was around textiles or around clothing. Gone are the days where you would find even, a, even large villages with a problem around adequate uh, clothing for its uh, residents. I remember as a young child, we used to hear of very, very sad stories about remote villages or tribal areas where clothing was a difficulty. But I think the first challenge that the nation overcame was the availability of affordable and in some sense uh, durable clothing within the country. Cotton played a very important role, as did other uh, textiles, polyesters and uh, technical textiles or geotextiles. The second big challenge which the country, I believe, has overcome significantly and thanks to our farmers across the country, 
was around food, save and except for one or two products, uh, largely around oil seeds and to some extent pulses. India over the years can proudly say we are self-reliant in our requirement of foodstuffs, food grains, vegetables, fruits, a variety of products. I mean, last year, if we see, we exported nearly 50 billion worth of agri and agri-related and marine-related products. That's about uh, 3.5 lakh crores or 3.75 lakh crores. It was no mean achievement for us that about 12% of our exports came from the agri-sector, apart from the 10% or that came from the textile and related sector. The third challenge that we had faced not very long ago and 30, 40 years is not very long in a nation's history was around shelter. And I think in the last few years, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has taken it upon himself to focus on ensuring that everybody gets access to a good home with all the necessary amenities and utilities in that home. And as many of you may be aware, both in the rural areas and in urban areas, through the Prime Minister's housing programs, the Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana Grameen or Shehri, we have been able to ensure that all those who did not have a proper home to live in are today the proud owners of a home. There is no home in the country who wishes to have electricity connection, who does not have an electricity connection today, and millions of young boys and girls who are otherwise deprived of a basic amenity like power, and who, whose education was suffering, whose development was suffering. Today we have electricity in, across the country, length and breadth of the country in every home. And everybody has access to cooking uh, gas connections, everybody has access to toilets. It has been a journey of 75 years making, moving from a less developed nation to a developing nation. And as the Honorable Prime Minister in his address to the nation from the ramparts of the Red Fort articulated day before yesterday, India is now moving towards the Panch Pran, the five promises that we have made to ourselves, the five commitments that we have made to ourselves, that we need to all work collectively as a nation to make India a developed nation in the next 25 years, the Amrit Kal, so that when we turn 100 in 2047, we will be counted amongst developed nations. Every citizen in this country, every citizen, every resident of India will be a proud resident of a developed nation with quality work, with quality housing, with the basic needs taken care of, quality education and health care for every person in the country. And I believe we all have a role to play when we are entering our 25 glorious years where we will, which will be the defining years for our nation, which will decide the future course of our people, uh, the destiny of this nation. And I'm sure with the collective energy, with the collective commitment, the resolve of 1.3 billion people will take us there, will help us achieve the five main ideas that were articulated at great length by the Prime Minister on 15th of August. Clearly, we cannot be a developed nation unless we remove that colonial mindset, the old, old age thinking that the class distinctions, the distinctions within society. Clearly, we cannot but take pride in our roots if we want to be a developed nation. Because nobody who doesn't, who's not proud of his own history, his own uh, 
heritage, the traditions that we have inherited, the family values that we all have and take pride in in India. We cannot improve the country's thinking or the country's life standards unless we take pride in our own tradition, history, in our virasat, in what we have gained from the very good value systems that we have all in, imbibed right from childhood. Also, we need to see a country which is strong, united, and which presents to the world one single idea, the idea of India being a developed nation. And I do believe the last three days from 13 to 15th August, we showed the world the strength of India in our unity. Despite being such a diverse nation, we showed the world how the collective power of 1.3 billion people, all holding a tiranga, the national flag, every home proudly showing uh, the national flag, every person in the country participating in this joyous celebration of 75 years of independence has clearly sent a message to the world of one India, one India emerging from the shadows of the past to become a, a developed nation. And of course, the last tenet that the Prime Minister spoke of, which is important for all of us, is the sense of duty, our own contribution, kartavya bhav. What are we going to contribute? How are we going to be responsible citizens of the nation? What will be our role in nation building? A nation which is free of corruption, nepotism, a nation which gives equal opportunity to every young child born in India, a nation where we break the barriers and the bondage of the past, a nation that is willing to adopt innovation as its defining feature. And I do believe the sense that I got from the panel this evening, the fact that uh, we, were, we, were, uh, we heard about innovation from Mr. Sondar Rajan when he started talking about the importance of the machinery sector in textiles and the importance of R&D and innovation. I was really happy to hear that, Sondar Rajanji, because it resonates very much with the thinking of the Prime Minister and our government that innovation is going to be the defining feature as we move towards a developed nation. For all of us, those who have been reading about other nations' economic history, we all recognize that most of Europe or the US, their strength comes from their R&D, their strength comes from their innovation. And they're thinking that they'll have to keep continuously evolving to become better and better at whatever they are doing. And I'm glad that Indian industry is also looking at innovation with the same spirit. I do appreciate what you said, Mr. Agarwal, about value chains. I think Mr. Skindler also touched upon the importance of value chains. He added the dimension of sustainability. And very clearly, that was another theme articulated by the Prime Minister on the 15th, where he spoke about India's own deep engagement with the sustainability or with climate change, not only today, when we are one of the principal players looking to evolve into electric vehicles, renewable energy, trying to improve uh, the quality of water, the quality of air. But also if we look back in history, we look back thousands of years also, for every Indian, sustainability or the respect for nature was ingrained right from childhood probably for thousands of years. He spoke about how we see God even in a small pebble, how we see God in our rivers, in our trees, in our mountains, in nature, in every aspect of nature. The Indian psyche respects nature. The Indian thought clearly values 
the contribution of nature to a better life. And we believe very strongly in India in intergenerational equity. We do not believe that our generation has the right to completely enjoy the fruits of nature in, the, in today's day without caring for what we are leaving behind for the next future generations. So in that sense, what each one of the panelists today spoke was very much in consonance with the thinking of the government. Uh, I do agree with Khaled Bhai that uh, brands and brand building, marketing will matter. In fact, that's another theme that we have often heard and discussed in various engagements with the textile industry in India also. Only yesterday, a large group was uh, at my office and they are trying to act as a bridge between our textile manufacturers and the buyers, both in India and abroad. And they were trying to explain to me how it is important that the sentiment of the buyer, the demands of the buyer, are better understood by our manufacturing sector so that we can really meet the needs of the world and the needs or the growing needs of the Indian consumer also. But very clearly the textile industry is playing a very important role in creating jobs, creating work opportunities, expanding the Indian economy. And I have no doubt in my mind that going forward, the, the five tenets, the Paach Pran, which Prime Minister spoke about yesterday, will also help all of us in the textile industry in taking the next leap of faith, the taking the next large steps so that we can contribute to making India a developed nation. And towards that end, I'm sure every stakeholder in our sector, be it the farmers for cotton, be it the various uh, manufacturing units, both for technical or geotextiles, man-made fibers, and other aspects of the value chain, right up to fashion and exports for the foreign markets. Everybody will play their role going forward. We are open to ideas. We are looking for newer thought processes from all of you and will hope that the deliberations that you have in today's Asian Textile Conference will come up with significant outcomes. I can only make five humble suggestions which I do hope each one of us will focus on. Uh, what uh, you said, Sondarajanji, innovation should be taken forward in a much faster uh, mission mode and across the value chain. It can't be only machinery, but across the value chain. We'll have to look at future of research, future of uh, technical textiles, which will all be technology driven. We have a large uh, national technical textile mission, which has significant funds available. And I'd appeal to all of you to see if you have any new ideas on which you would like to carry out research. The government would be very, very happy to support you and particularly support you through public-private partnership. Sustainability needs newer ideas apart from what we are already doing. For example, yesterday I was told while reuse and recycle is a part of uh, what we are trying to do, whether we could also look at uh, desalination so that the entire textile product becomes uh, free of uh, using uh, clean water. Whether desal could be also involved along with the three hours of reduce, reuse and recycle. So maybe some more thinking and costing behind that could be considered. Digitization will play an important role for traceability. We've had some issues with Egypt in the recent past. I hope with this new MOU that you're doing, we can cross that hump and reduce the trust deficit, particularly between two friendly nations. And uh, also in India, work towards natural farming and uh, organic farming in a bigger way with proper traceability and blockchain technology so that what we offer to the world as sustainable will truly get us the right value for our Indian textile industry. I do believe 
initiatives like the government e-marketplace or the open network for digital commerce will help us bring technology to our sector. And therefore, digitization does have a holistic role to play in this sector. I believe uh, more thrust on high quality products and therefore a focus on quality, focus on scale to get the benefits of economies of scale and meet the growing needs of the world market. As well as certain elementary uh, products which are not made in India like zips or the embellishments. A lot of them are not made to quality or scale in India. Could be another area where some of the young startups or entrepreneurs could come up with interesting ideas or investments. And finally, we are engaging with the world through greater degree of bilateral or multilateral engagements. We've, as you rightly pointed out, free trade agreements with the developed world are an important agenda item of the Modi government. We will continue to engage with you, have a dialogue with you, so that we can get the best out of these free trade agreements. But I do hope you will study our, our free trade agreements and make the best use of it. Enjoy the fruits of that wherever we are entering into such agreements. Unless we see significant ramp up of exports to these areas, we will not get the satisfaction whether we are doing the right thing. Because obviously to get market access, particularly duty-free market access for labor-intensive sectors like textiles, leather, sportswear, pharmaceutical, has been a thrust area. But for which we'll also be sacrificing or opening our markets, FTAs being a two-way traffic in other areas. So it will need a greater outcome from your sector and a visible outcome from your sector for us to be able to market to the other sectors the importance of doing FTAs. So these are my five messages to you. Innovation, sustainability, digitization, uh, newer products which are not made in India and expanding quality and scale and finally utilization of these free trade agreements. If all of us collectively can deliberate and come up with good ideas, how we can uh, expand to the $100 billion international business that I have set before you at the, in a very defined time frame at the earliest and have a, at least a quarter trillion dollar textile ecosystem in India by in the next five, seven years. If we can take that as our mission, then I'm sure no power on earth can stop India from becoming a developed nation and the textile sector from playing a significant role in our efforts. If this we can achieve in the next five years or so, then I think over the next 25 years, we can look at playing a very, very significantly bigger role in the world trade and contribute to nation building, contribute to jobs, contributing to giving opportunity for our young boys and girls, and truly becoming, as we have over the years, the torchbearer of a vibrant, growing superpower. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your excellent speech and your motivational and inspirational speech. Thank you very much, sir. Signing off MOU between Confederation of Indian Textile Industry and Cotton Egypt Association. City and Egyptian Cotton Association is signing this MOU to enhance their bilateral trade. We intend to have more B2Bs and better knowledge sharing and understanding of improving the cotton value chain. Thank you. And uh, the, finally, on behalf of the Confederation of Indian Textile Industry, on behalf of each one of you, I thank our Honorable Minister
for textiles, commerce and industry, food and public distribution, Shri Piyush Goyal ji for being with us today evening and spending his valuable time and giving his innovative thoughts and ideas. Sir, on behalf of the industry, we assure you we will take forward the ideas and thoughts and we will ensure we achieve the targets set by the government. I once again thank you for being with us today evening, sir. Thank you, sir.